We only had six games left here in season number one with the Las Vegas Venom, and our team was currently sitting at 41 and 35 on the season. Is that right now had us tied for the seventh seed with the Golden State Warriors? Starting with the game against the Sacramento Kings, we needed to pick up as many wins as we could in these last six games because if we fell down to the seventh or eighth seed, we would have to play in the play-in tournament. We would get this game started out with our very first possession as Dario Saric would get our first bucket of the night, but the Kings would quickly respond as De'Aaron Fox would find his way into the lane and slam this one down. Our go-to three-point shooter Isaiah Joe would have an answer for them as he would come off the screen and knock down our first three-pointer, but once again, the Sacramento Kings would have an answer of their own for that. Both teams were off to a hot start so far tonight as neither one had missed a bucket to start the first quarter. And Sacramento was looking to get their very first lead as De'Aaron Fox would drive the lane and draw the foul. And this free throw would put them up by one. The Kings now had their first lead of the night and they didn't want to give it back to us as they would be up by three and Dante Exum would think about pulling the trigger here but he would find Dario Saric down low and he would complete the and one play to tie the game back up. We now had a chance to take the lead back from the Kings as Luke Kennard would knock down this three-pointer and he has been a huge factor for us coming off the bench with his three-point shooting so far this season. Luke Kennard is definitely going to be one of the players I want to bring back for season number two for us but we can't focus too much on that now as we still have three more quarters to play here as we would end the first up by two over the Kings. We would get the second quarter started as Torian Prince would find his way in the lane for that bucket but the Kings wouldn't be far behind as Kevin Horder would knock down this three-pointer and we were trying to avoid giving up this lead now in the second quarter to Sacramento. We were making it a pretty tough job for ourselves though as we kept leaving them wide open for threes as DeMontis Sabonis would tie it up but we'd get the lead right back. Speaking of threes, it would be time for one of our own as Torian Prince was left wide open, but once again, we would leave Kevin Harder wide open and he would knock this down for Sacramento. We still had a two-point lead though and we were looking to extend it as Dario Saric would get this to fall and he would go to the line to complete the three-point play and things kept looking to swing our way as Isaiah Joe would get the steal here and Dante Exum would slam it down on the fast break as it looked like the momentum was finally starting to shift our way and our lead was extending. We hadn't heard much from Luke Kennard so far the second quarter tonight so he decided to get his name in the mix as that three-pointer from him would put us up by 10 but Sacramento was still finding ways to keep themselves in this game tonight as that was a really stupid foul from Kennard and so Sacramento would get three free throws and they would go ahead and knock down all three of them. Just over a minute left to go in the second quarter and Sacramento was only down by five as what was once a double-digit lead was now only down to a three-point lead for us but we'd get it back to five and it looked like we would get a stop headed into halftime as DeMontis Sabonis would miss this hook shot but JaVale McGee would be there for the offensive rebound as Markel Fultz would get one last shot off and we would head into halftime with only a three-point lead over the Kings. Kevin Horder had been a problem for our defense all day and he was still proving to be one here in the second half but thankfully Markel Fultz was on fire from the second quarter and that hot streak was still continuing. It had been a quiet day so far for Jalen Smith but he was finally starting to get involved as well but despite all this Sacramento still had it down to a one-point game. This three-pointer from Isaiah Joe at least started to give us a little breathing room, but De'Aaron Fox was still helping keep his team in this game so far. 16 points from De'Aaron Fox though so far tonight still wasn't enough to get the lead, but he was definitely getting it close for them. Both teams would go almost two minutes without scoring until finally Torian Prince would knock down this three-pointer for us, but the cold streak for Sacramento unfortunately had come to an end as well for them. It finally looked like we might have a chance to extend this lead after this three-pointer from Isaiah Joe, but the big man just JaVale McGee would answer right back for Sacramento as they were looking to get it back to a three-point game but finally and thankfully we would get a defensive stop right before the end of the third and that would turn into a quick transition bucket from Luke Kennard for us as we would now head into the final quarter of play with a nine-point lead over the Kings. This game was far from over and we needed to keep the pressure on Sacramento and we could not be giving up easy second chance points like this in the fourth quarter. Combine that with giving up fast break opportunities like this to them and they suddenly found themselves themselves right back in this game against us. Harrison Barnes would go two for two at the free throw line and just like that it was back down to a five point lead for us that we needed to extend. We did a good job of stopping it in the third quarter but we were back to leaving the Kings wide open for threes here in the fourth but at least we were able to come down and hit one of our own right back at them. While it hadn't been a problem so much for us tonight it has been a problem throughout the season as second chance points were keeping the Kings in it tonight and we were just barely scraping by with this five point lead. After almost three minutes 
to scoreless basketball, we would once again give up second chance points to the Kings. And then on a fast break, Harrison Barnes would find a wide open Kevin Hoarder who would tie this game up as we had lost all momentum and needed a timeout. Thankfully, we hadn't given up the lead yet as Dante Exum would take it back for us. And the Kings might have thought they had an easy basket in the paint here, but Jalen Smith would play some great defense only for us to let Sacramento tie it up on a wide open corner shot the next possession. Tied at 87, Markel Fultz would find Jalen Smith who would get fouled at the rim as he would thankfully go two for two at the line for us. And then on the other side, we would come up with a huge stop as we would force the miss from De'Aaron Fox and Isaiah Joe would find Markel Fultz who would then find Dante Exum and would knock down this corner three as the Sacramento Kings needed a bucket to fall badly but De'Aaron Fox could not knock this one down. And Markel Fultz would find Dante Exum who would knock down another three for us. Sacramento needed to respond quickly and they would find a wide open three of their own as they would have another chance on the fast break. Kevin Herter wide open but he would miss it and we would get the rebound as they would have to intentionally foul. And after not missing a single free throw in the fourth quarter, we would walk away with this close victory 99 to 91 over the Kings on the road. Markel Fultz had a fantastic night for us as he had almost a triple double leading us into victory over the Kings. But sitting at 42 and 35, it was time to see how we finished out season number one. We would barely drop our next game by one point to the Cavaliers. And after a second loss in a row to the Chicago Bulls at home, we had fallen down to the seventh seed in the Western Conference. A third straight loss in a row to the Oklahoma City Thunder wasn't doing us any good, but we would finally bounce back with a win on the road against the Miami Heat. And with only one game left here in season number one for us, we were currently tied with the Golden State Warriors for the sixth seed. As a win in our very last game of the season against the Chicago Bulls means we would take back over the sixth seed and wouldn't be playing in the play-in tournament next episode.